Hello friend, welcome back to Coffee and Bible Time. If you're new here, my name is Ashley. I'm so excited that you are here today. I went to Bible school for four years. I have my undergrad degree in biblical studies and my passion is to teach the Bible. So consider subscribing if you're new here. If you like these types of videos, let me know in the comments. So as you can see here, I'm already getting started with sectioning out my Bible in the sections that I want to take notes. So I did something a little bit more fancy. I used a ruler and I put some, you know, lines and sections and I'll, I'll tell you about this more in detail later. Um, but I'm going to just insert some photos here of what it sometimes looks like in my Bible when I take notes. It doesn't always look super neat. So here are some pictures. And you know, I think that's the beauty of it is that my Bible doesn't look perfect. It's just me coming before the Lord, seeking his face and writing down my thoughts, writing down my meditations, writing down what he is teaching me through his word. That's as simple as it can be. But today, I'm going to give you something a little bit more structured. If you want to do this in your Bible, you absolutely can. And maybe you don't want to do it exactly how I do it. That's okay. But maybe this will just give you some great ideas. So I'm going to be teaching you guys today how I study my Bible, kind of an updated version, and then how I take notes in my Bible. So I am so excited. So actually, before I start any note taking in my bible i do some things before this and i'm just going to put it up here with a little cute sticky note and i'll go through this pretty quickly but the first thing i do is i pray i say open my eyes lord and it can be as simple as that and sometimes i even forget to pray i'm not gonna lie and, and then in the middle of my bible reading i i'm like oh my gosh lord i totally forgot to pray please be here with me open my eyes because i know that in and of myself i can't understand god's word in psalm 119 it says open my eyes to your word that i may understand right so we can't understand without him and so then I wrote in the next bullet point, understand the book. So today I'm studying in the book of Ruth and I'm studying a verse, a few verses. But before I can even study those verses, I need to have a grasp on the book of Ruth. I need to read through it. And let's say it's a giant book and you don't have time to read through the entire thing, then I would suggest watching a Bible project video or looking up a summary of the book. Know the outline or the story of the book. For example, I'm in the book of Ruth right now, and I know the story as I'm reading it, right? I, I can read through it really quick. It's only four chapters. I know the story as I'm studying it. As I'm studying a verse out of the book, I don't want to just take that verse out of context. I want to know what it means within the larger context of the story. I want to know the background info. When was this written? Who's the author? When did all of this happen in the timeline of the Bible, right? Where are we in the history of the Bible? And if these are questions that you are confused on how to answer, I would highly suggest you come join our Bible Study Academy. These are all questions you will learn how to answer for yourself. You will not need me to guide you. You can learn how to look these things up, where to find them, what, what are the right questions to ask, things like that. Then I slowly and meditatively read the passage that I will be studying for that day. Like I said, slowly is really important because if we're rushing through our Bible study time, which, hey, I can tell you right now that I'm one to do that sometimes, it's not the most beneficial thing to do because when you read it fast, you don't soak it in as much. You don't understand as much. We shouldn't come to our Bibles as we come to our phones, like with the scrolling mentality. We should come to it more slowly and meditatively. And then I research some questions, I get out my commentaries, I get out my Bible dictionaries, I get out my study tools, which we also talk about in the academy if you want to learn more. And then I start to take notes. So let's get right into learning how to take notes the way that I do in my Bible. I split my Bible up into about eight sections here. So I have the first little rectangle box up top, I put what the passage is and then what the date is. And then 
going on into the next boxes, I just add different areas of study that I want to do as I'm reading my Bible. And sometimes this just happens naturally. I don't have to do these fixed boxes. Um, but for your sake, I'm showing you kind of the things that I look for as I study my Bible. For First and foremost, I look for who God is in a passage. What does this passage tell me about God's nature, about his names, about his character qualities, about his actions? It's so important that we study who God is in a passage. That's the first thing I always look for. The second thing I wrote down here were themes. What were major themes that were sticking out in this passage? Third, word studies. So are there any words that I want to look into more, that I want to study more, that I want to look up in my Greek and Hebrew lexicon? Next, I did summaries slash meaning. So I really want to make sure that when I walk away from a passage, I know that I fully understood what this passage was about. Can I summarize it in my own words? Can I know what the meaning of it, right? That's what good Bible study is, is when we can study it rightly, knowing the history, the context, the author, and everything, so we can come to a right, correct meaning and understanding of the text. In the little circle over there, I wrote down quotes or cross-references, because I'm going to be studying from some commentaries, so maybe there will be some quotes that stand out to me, or some cross-referencing I can do, so other times I can... Cross-referencing pretty much means what what other verses in the Bible connect with what I'm reading here? What word connections are there? What verse connections are there? And you'll kind of see later on what I found in Ruth here. Um, and then the last two sections there are kind of similar, but um, the section down there says, my brokenness slash Christ's redemption. And I heard this quote once, I can't remember from who, but they said, what does this passage reveal about my spiritual brokenness that requires the redemptive work of Christ? What does this passage reveal about my brokenness that requires the redemptive work of Christ? The entire Bible points to Jesus. And, you know, one of the biggest th failures or mistakes I can do when reading my Bible is think that it is just a self-help book and it's a list of do's and don'ts and I'm reading what I have to do to become a better person, right? What do I have to do, do, do to become a better person? Well, the gospel is that we're all broken. We're all messed up. We're all sinful. And we need the redemptive work of Christ in our lives, right? So I can't just read the Bible and force myself to become a better person. I have to look to see where is the brokenness of myself within this passage? And where is the redemptive work of God? through Jesus Christ. Now, obviously that is hard to find in the Old Testament, but there are ways that you can always connect a passage to Christ. Yes, the Bible does teach us how to live rightly. It teaches us how to become more Christ-like, but when we only focus on the do's, do's, do's without real realizing that it's only Jesus who can transform our heart, that's where things can go wrong. So then at the very bottom, I just have application and prayer. And then, of course, I put this all in different colors. I like to color code and I use the coffee and Bible time highlighters, which are available on our website and on Amazon. So, so beautiful. That's how I'm laying out all the questions I'm going to ask. Today, I am studying Ruth 3, 9 through 12. This is an incredible, incredible few verses. All of Ruth is incredible. I would highly encourage you guys to read it. But I'm going to focus on chapter 3, but specifically verses 9 through 13, mainly looking at the character qualities of Ruth and Boaz and how that reflects God too. Um, Ruth is known as a worthy woman who shows immense amounts of kindness and Boaz is known as the redeemer, the kinsman redeemer. So I'm going to be looking into those words. And first I want to note who is God in this passage. And I just wrote, God is working behind the scenes in this passage and in the entirety of the book. I thought it's interesting how in this passage here, Ruth says, spread your wings over your servant for you are a redeemer. Earlier in the book, Boaz talked about how 
may God spread his wings over you. And look how God is using Boaz, using even what Boaz said. God is using Boaz to be the wings of God over Ruth as her redeemer. And ultimately, all this talk of a, of a kinsman redeemer points to God as our redeemer, Christ as our ultimate redeemer, and how all of these kindness and redemptions and love and acts of mercy all point to the Father. So next I talk about themes. There are three themes that really stood out to me. One, redeemer. Boaz is the kinsman redeemer, the closest relative to redeem land and marriage for Ruth and Naomi. I was kind of just studying what that verse means, what it means that Boaz is a kinsman redeemer. We don't really use that term in our society at all. So it's important to study that in the cultural context. Two, kindness. This beautiful Hebrew word that shows up over and over again. Acts of mercy and love beyond the normal. It's a character quality of God himself. God is the ultimate one who shows acts of kindness and we then follow in his footsteps. And third, the worthy woman, a woman of valor, strength, valiant. And as I did a word study of what this means, worthy woman, excellent woman, this Hebrew word means ability, war, strength, army, valor. It has a lot of times to do with war and horses and strength. It means strong, virtuous character in the case of Ruth. And one incredible thing is that this same word used to describe Ruth is only mentioned one other time, two other time in Proverbs, and it's about the third Proverbs 31 woman. We all know about the Proverbs 31 woman, and the only other time that this is mentioned is over there. So Ruth ultimately displays what it means to be the Proverbs 31 woman. And as I was studying this in my commentary, the commentator noted it too, a woman of valor who can find, right? That's the same verse here as Ruth being a worthy woman. She's clothed in strength and dignity. A woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Ruth ultimately 100% feared the Lord. She showed kindness. She provided for her family. She went out of her way to do works of mercy and kindness and provision for other people. She's the ultimate Proverbs 31 woman. And she displayed a lot of these character qualities, all of these character qualities, before she was even married to Boaz. So you do not have to be married in order to be an excellent woman of valor and strength and strong character. So then to make sure I was understanding everything, I wrote a small summary. I said, Ruth, being loyal and kind to Naomi, goes to Boaz with a marriage proposal. Boaz being the kinsman redeemer is blown away by Ruth's kindness. He calls her a woman of valor. Both Boaz and Ruth exude Christ-like qualities. And then lastly, in my brokenness slash Christ redemption section, I said, Lord, you are the ultimate redeemer behind this story. You redeem and show unconditional love and kindness. You go out of your way over and over. Your ultimate act of kindness was in your son. Lord, I want to be a woman of valor and kindness. I want you and need you to work in my heart. My selfish nature resists resists to have a loyal and kind heart. But may your work on the cross be an example to me that I am to follow in your footsteps. So there you go. That is everything I did in taking notes today. I hope you enjoyed this. At the end, I just, of course, added more color um, to add a little more funness to it. But there you go, you guys. That's how simple it can be to study your Bible. I know that this was a little bit more in-depth. It might seem like a lot. You do not have to go this crazy every time you read your Bible. In fact, I don't do this every time I read my Bible. I'm just showing you one method that you can do to take notes that can be very, very beneficial to your heart and to the way that you study your Bible. If you like this video, make sure you share with a friend and hit the thumbs up button. I love you guys and I will see you very soon. Bye.